This is a $600,000 house in Los Angeles, California. And this is also a $600,000 house but in Thailand or India or Indonesia. Like this is how much a 10 kilometer taxi ride would cost you in New York. And this is how much that same taxi ride would cost you in Mumbai or Manila or even Cairo. If someone from the US making $50,000 a year packed their bags and moved to India or Indonesia, they would live like kings. But if cheaper countries are so ideal, then why do most expensive countries look like this? While most cheap countries look like this. And why do most people move from cheap countries to expensive countries and not the other way around? Well to answer that we gotta first see how disgustingly cheap some countries on this side of the world really are. And then we'll reveal how a certain group of people have used these cheap prices to become 7 figure millionaires and how you can do that too. Now haircuts are an essential part of human existence because without them we'd look like this. So according to most online sources a haircut in a country like India might typically cost somewhere between 100 to 200 rupees which is around 1.2 to 2 4 dollars. Now let's compare this to the cost of a haircut in countries like Denmark or Norway. Probably isn't that much higher than India's haircut price. Right. So what about things like housing rent? How much it costs to have a roof on your head other than your hair? Well, this is how much a one bedroom city center apartment in New York would cost you in a month. But this is how much it would cost you in Mumbai. That's 84.6% lower, but there's more. Even your basic utilities like electricity and water are much cheaper in India. Same goes for internet services. So why doesn't everyone pack their bags and just move to India? Well, we'll get there, but first you're not a unicorn eating rainbows. You need food as well, human food. So here, have a Big Mac from the Big Mac index by The Economist. This is the prices of Big Mac burgers from McDonald's in various countries around the globe. So this is how much a Big Mac would cost you if you lived in the United States. And even higher if you're in Switzerland. But if you make your way down to India, Taiwan, or Egypt, you can buy an ocean of Big Macs. Just look at how cheap they are. But what if you want to eat healthy? What if you actually care about your health unlike 97% of human beings these days? So let's say we go grocery shopping in the majestic city of New York. We buy a kilogram of white rice, a kilogram of chicken filet, and a dozen eggs. Typical daily shopping, right? Well, this would be our total bill at the end. Jesus Christ. Now let's say you're on a nice vacation to Mumbai and even though you're chilling in a different time zone, you're still all about that healthy life. This time though, this would be your total bill buying the same items. $25 less than what it cost us in New York. New York grocery price is almost a week's worth of groceries in India. And here's some other stuff that cost a whole spaceship in the US and just a toothpick in India. Cappuccinos, cans of coke, cigarettes, and gym memberships, and even movie tickets. And to zoom out and take a look at the bigger picture, here's the cost of living map. It uses red for countries with the highest prices and green for countries with the lowest. And as you can so clearly see, Asia is much cheaper than the US and Europe. But then why does Asia look like this while Europe looks like this. Shouldn't it be the other way around since Asia is so cheap? Shouldn't Asian countries be prospering more than Europe? Yes, it is true that Europe can make your money disappear faster than Taylor Swift's concerts and places like India and Vietnam feel like a budget-friendly paradise. But there is something huge that we're missing here. Let me explain. <coughs> we'll use the Big Mac index again to compare the USA and India. But this time around we're throwing in people's incomes as well. This is the median daily income in the USA and this is the price of a Big Mac over there. So with that income you can buy 30 Big Macs a day. But if we swing over to India, the usual daily income is only $3.89. Which means that even though a Big Mac costs only $2.54, you can only afford one Big Mac a day with that kind of income. Now why would an Indian or a Filipino student at a US university have a much tougher time than a British or a German student over there? Because most students need $1,200 to live through a month in a US college. That's close to how much people make in Germany and UK in one month. And that's also close to how much people make in India and Philippines in one year. So you can totally see how much of a struggle it would be for an Indian or a Filipino parent to finance their kids education abroad. So you see people in the West have higher incomes so they can buy things at higher prices more easily while people in the East struggle to buy the same exact things at much lower prices. And this is one of the biggest reasons behind this difference in appearance. However, later we'll reveal one very clever group of people living in the East who do things very differently and use very smart techniques to fool this whole economic system. But first, hold on, let's get one thing straight. If you buy into these kind of misleading maps that only show price differences between countries, well then you're a dum-dum. Instead, you should look at maps like this. Maps that display the purchasing power of people in different countries. Because these are the maps that actually give us a better idea of how rich or poor the actual population of a country really is. So while this part of the world might give you a break with cheaper stuff and shopping, rent and filling your kitchen and tummy, none of these things even matter with lower incomes and lower purchasing power. But with all the weight on these lower income countries, there is one group of people who have found a way around this system and they have become 
become filthy rich. And no, I'm not talking about the ultra rich that puff on stinky cigars that probably double air pollution. I'm talking about the group of people that live in lower income countries, but somehow these laws of economics don't really apply to them. They seem to have developed a whole immunity to lower incomes. And here's the biggest twist. They have higher purchasing power than people on this side of the world. As you already know, someone earning median wage in the US can manage to buy 30 Big Macs a day with their daily income. But someone earning median wage in India can only buy one. But someone earning median US income while living in India would be able to buy this many Big Macs per day. But who are these cheeky little magicians? Online money makers. You see, a gazillion people in Asia make their bread online. They earn in US dollars through digital gigs like freelancing, content creation, and selling stuff online. And guess what? These people aren't even super rich like Mr. Beast or myself. They make money online, but they make the same as regular people in the US or Europe would make every day. But here's a cool part. They spend much less than what regular people in the US or Europe would spend. The Western world comes with pricey stuff, but also fatter wallets. So high prices, but also higher incomes. The Eastern world, well, they've got lower prices, but also low incomes. But online earners in the Eastern world have to pay low prices while also earning high Western standard incomes online. And so these people are basically living the dream. And they don't want Big Macs, but they want big savings. Meaning this is a group of people which is able to save and invest the most amount of money. And that means that they have got some serious purchasing power. But these people are just the ones who make median US wages online. Which is around the same as a McDonald's employee's salary or a bartender's salary in the US. But there are some people who make six figures online, which is a doctor's or a lawyer's salary in America. And let me tell you, these people are the real deal. The ones who are literally in heaven. And this is why there's a whole universe of digital nomads and online earners in the West that are also packing their bags to move to Asia to live the ultimate dream life. Especially to Bali and Indonesia, which has been a hot destination for these people. They get to travel around, chill at beaches, and spend 5,000 times less than what they would spend in their home countries, all while making high incomes from their laptops. Speaking of laptops, if you're using a laptop, try hovering down to that like button. But if if you're not, then just check out this video right here.